everybody, and welcome to the Berea Report here on Sports Time Ohio, the Wednesday edition as the Browns get set for Game 3 on Sunday at MNC Bank Stadium in Baltimore when they take on the 2-0 Baltimore Ravens, who have wins over Kansas City and then a great win last Sunday in San Diego over the Chargers. The Browns 0-2 with consecutive losses to Minnesota and then the very disappointing loss to Denver last Sunday against the Broncos at Invesco Field. Jim Donovan along with the Plain Dealers, Mary Kay Cabot, the Browns could have picked an easier place to try and get their first win of the year. This is one of the true home field advantages in the NFL. It absolutely is, and we've seen that obviously over the years, and it's Brady Quinn's first start there. It's not going to get any easier because, of course, that Ravens defense and Joe Flacco playing really well. So, tall order in Baltimore. Now, Brady Quinn has played there before and started there before while at Notre Dame. He's played a couple of games there against Navy. What do you think? The Navy defense uh, on the same par with the Ravens defense? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think this will be like, you know, nothing for him. All right, so we come into this game, Mary Kay, and a lot of people are wondering you know, when are the Browns going to win? And a lot of people thinking it's not going to be this week against Baltimore. Yet, last Sunday, San Diego threw on Baltimore, which was surprising. But in the end, when Baltimore needed a defensive play, there was Ray Lewis to do it. Um, you think that Brady Quinn can throw against this defense? Well, you know, like you said, they showed a little bit of vulnerability last week, so perhaps he can, and I think it's time to start trying to stretch defenses a little bit. They're going to have to do that, but the thing that concerns me more is their run defense and what is Jamal Lewis going to be able to do against Ray Lewis. It's a big week for Eric Mangini, I mean, to try and get his team not only to go in there and try and win the game, but I think to be competitive in the game. This thing could get ugly quickly if you can't run the ball at all and you put Brady Quinn back there just to throw all day these guys are going to get them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have all seen what this defense can do. Again, you said, you, you mentioned the big stop that Ray Lewis had. He is going to, he comes into this game just, you know, on fire, especially because he's going up against Jamal Lewis. And if they take that away, they will be teeing off on Brady Quinn. We saw the problems that they had last week. He's been sacked nine times already compared to once in his three starts last year. He's not going to hold up that long like that. All right, a couple of news tidbits before we listen in on head coach Eric Mangini. Martin Ryan Rucker, we hardly knew you. He is gone. Another product of Phil Savage's last draft. There are only two players now left from that draft, Alex Hall and Atava Rubin. The Browns uh, also got rid of Marquise Floyd, a defensive back they picked up after the last cut. And so they end up with Greg Estandia. You all know him from Jacksonville, the tight end. Anthony Madison, we do know a little bit. He's out of the University of Alabama and had some years with the Steelers. They've been added to the roster. And I don't know how effective they're going to be this week, but this seems to be a Tuesday thing now with the Browns doesn't it? Well, you know, I mean, we, we remember in the Bill Belichick years, they were always turning over that bottom few players on right. the roster, but I, I do think it's significant that, I mean, the last regime, that last, co last coaching staff really tried to tell us, whether it be on or off the record, that they thought nothing of Bo Bell, they really thought nothing of Martin Rucker, and now those guys are gone, and that draft is pretty much wiped out, and that's a sad statement. Boy, that is. That is a sad statement when you lose an entire draft like that, and they have lost an entire draft. Back to the Ravens game and the Browns progress and their mood going into the game head coach Eric Mancini not happy with the progress that his team has been making and they need to step it up I'm not satisfied with with any of our progress I think that um, I think that the consistency needs to improve and uh, we're all responsible for that and we all have to fix that and you can't play a half football you can't play three quarters of football you just you can't do it. It's got to be, it's got to be the same throughout the course of the game. And that's that's really what I'm looking for uh, overall is that consistency throughout the course of the game. And and once we get to that point, um, you know things will things will be a lot better. Head coach Eric Mangini. Let's turn to Brady Quinn, and we'll hear from him in just a second. You made some interesting points yesterday in your article in The Plain Dealer, and I think you were right on target when you talked about, you know, a couple of years ago, Derek Anderson had, he had Joe Juravicious, he had Kellen Winslow, he had a more confident Braylon Edwards, he had a younger Jamal Lewis. Right. There were more pieces there. It was a better offensive line. He had Ryan Tucker on the offensive line. Brady Quinn has an older Jamal Lewis. He has Braylon Edwards coming back after a tough year, doesn't have Juravicious. 
Patricia's does not have Winslow anymore, and that was a big go-to guy for him. Ten catches in his first start uh, when he played against Denver, went to Winslow in that game. I mean, you know, this is this is a tough thing for him. It really is. And, you know, I think if we listen to Brady Quinn today and if you read between the lines of what he was trying to say, we were asking him about guys like Joe Flacco and Matt Ryan. And he continued to say, you know, they had a, a very good team around those players and they had the whole thing rolling. The whole thing is not rolling in this situation at all. There's obviously some problems on the offensive line. That's not helping him. Like you said, Jamal Lewis, you've got a young receiving core that they're not even using yet. Your, your go-to guy is Josh Cribbs on third down. You know, that may work down the road, but right now, you know, that's, you know, he's not as reliable as he needs to be in that situation.